Alright, what's up guys? It's your boy Scrubby here, back again with another video. I'm starting to feel a little bit better, but I, I just want a couple more days to relax and rest, and then I will be back. One more compilation for you guys. You guys have been enjoying them, though. Thank you so much. Be sure to press the like button and sit back, relax, and enjoy. Alright, so the person who sent this in to me works at a fast food restaurant, which, you know, isn't necessarily their favorite job on the planet, but they get paid to do it, so it is what it is. And everything was going pretty okay until the owner of the franchise franchise decided to make his nephew the manager pretty nepotistic hire only hired him because he was his nephew immediately gave him the manager role when he had never worked there a day in his life and to top it all off the nephew himself was a little bit of a douchebag and by a little bit i mean a lot of bit he was insanely controlling like for example he would tell them to go clean the bathroom and they would go clean the bathroom and as they were cleaning the bathroom he would come in and be like yeah, I don't like the way you're wiping the mirror clockwise. You need to go counterclockwise. And then he would flick water all over it so they had to clean it again and be like, I didn't like the way you did that. That level of controlling. He would time everything in terms of like how long they had to go to the bathroom. They could only be in the restroom for five minutes at a time any longer. And he would come in and be like, what are you doing? Just a manager who had no idea how to actually effectively be a manager. Probably because he had no experience working either his uh, uncle just decided to hire him as the manager with no experience. I just feel like that's not something I would ever want to do. I'm not saying I would be opposed to like working as a manager, but I would never want to manage anything that I don't know. I've never worked at a fast food restaurant. If I try to tell people how to make a cheeseburger in a timely fashion, it's not going to go as fast as it probably could because I don't know crap about it. Why would you want a job where you're just immediately a manager with no experience? That just sounds like a recipe for disaster. Either way, though, the staff just kind of realized they were going to have to deal with it because there was no way he was going to get fired. So most of them just got used to it and dealt with a bunch of the bullcrap rules. Some people quit, but not that many people wanted to quit yet. And there was one co-worker in particular that was a super hard worker, and he was kind of like the de facto manager because everyone hated the real manager. Like, if he asked somebody to do something, they would do it, no questions asked, because he just worked a lot and everyone respected him, and he never was like, hey, you need to do what I say because da 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 he never did illogical things and his name was Alec and he was working an average of 60 hours a week now that's 20 hours more than a normal full-time job and I'm not saying people don't work 60 hours a week I know probably a lot of people watching this video you or your parents have had to work that much before but like if you can do that consistently you're a really hard worker that's impressive I think working 40 hours a week is like a, a full schedule Willingly working basically a full and a half time job is uh, not an easy thing to do. So he was a very hard worker and because he was working all the time, he was pretty good at running the store. So everyone kind of looked to him as their default leader. And for some reason, one day, Mr. Douchebag is on a mega power trip and he decides that he's going to change the script for how they're supposed to interact with the customers. Now, there is a script that corporate usually gives them. It's not very good. It's kind of clunky. So up until that point, they were just kind of allowed to say whatever they wanted. And obviously, you couldn't look at the customer and be like, hey, you're ugly. What do you want? You know, but as long as you were polite and respectful, there's really no issue. If someone says, hey, and another person says, hi, it doesn't matter as long as they buy food. But the manager decides that he's going to come up with the new script for how they have to interact with the customers. And it's not a good script at all. The default one was already too long and kind of clunky, but the one that he invented, was like a five minute dissertation PowerPoint speech that he wanted done this exact way with every single customer. And it wasn't even like it was just long. I mean, it being long is probably a problem. It's called fast food for a reason. I don't want to hear a speech from your workers. No offense. I just like don't need a one minute introduction before you even ask me what I want to order. So on top of that though, it didn't flow well. It was like the guy had never written a script before. Like it would open up, what can I get you? to drink and then like specials for 30 minutes and then ask what size they wanted the drink like just interrupting things it made no sense if you actually tried to use what he had wanted them to use and written out on a customer they would probably think you were having a stroke hey can we just focus on one thing at a time you're like no we cannot what how many nuggets do you want I didn't even ask for nuggets okay so zero hamburgers plus or minus eight they're like what is happening just pretend you're having a malfunction put some firecrackers behind 
behind your ears so sparks start flying out of your head. I've gone offline. BurgerBot needs to be rebooted. Anyways, he comes up with this garbage script that it would be very, very annoying to have to use to actually interact with people, and no one wanted to use it, so they didn't use it. They kind of were like, all right, I appreciate that you made this, and then went back to doing what they normally do. And keep in mind, it's not like the store is doing bad. It's always busy. It's always got people in it. They always are breaking their, like, sales to every other franchise in the area. You know how they kind of compare them? They're always one of the better ones, so there's just no problem at hand. I could understand being a manager to come in and make a bunch of changes if it's, like, the only unprofitable franchise in the entire country. I get why you would need to change a lot, but if everything's going good, I just don't understand why you would want to come in and rock the boat. Especially if you have no experience. Like, oh, okay, this place is making a lot of money. Awesome. I'll do everything in my power to make sure it doesn't make as much money. Okay? Okay. And his uncle was like, oh, you're such a brilliant business mind. Anyways, no one was using the script and it was a pretty busy time in the middle of a rush. So there's just a bunch of people in line and Alec kind of goes back to muscle memory and starts using what he normally says to people. But the manager is close and hears him not using the script when he's interacting with a customer. And like I said, Alec was unofficial manager, so everyone on shift really respected him. So they weren't too thrilled when the manager walks up to him in the middle of him interacting with the customer and starts yelling at him for not using the script. And I think the script is stupid, but if you're gonna enforce it, if you really want people to use your script, then you still shouldn't go yell at them in front of the customer. It doesn't make you look like a good manager, it makes you look like a jerk, and it doesn't make your employees look good, it makes the customer think that you can't even trust your employees, so why should they? It's just really dumb, especially in the middle of a rush, like you're gonna take someone off a cash register to be really mad at them because they didn't use the pre-approved sentences that you liked. This is basically like what corporations become in borderlands, you know, where they own entire planets, they want to control what you say down to every letter. Uh, off topic reference, I'm sorry. But the manager just starts going off on Alec. He starts saying that he's a moron if he doesn't have the brain power to memorize something he should just say so he probably doesn't have the brain power to give people change so he'll keep an eye on it just going off on him way way meaner than he had to be like listen if you're the manager they're not your family bro you shouldn't even talk to your family like that but like you kind of have to talk to them with some level of respect but he's just talking to Alec like he's an idiot and keep in mind Alec is working 60 hours a week. He's kind of got the store on his back. If the store was Yoda, all right, then Alec is Luke and they're trudging through the swamp because he's just got him on their back. He's carrying it. And Alec isn't too fond of being laid into in front of the customers because who in their right mind would enjoy that? No, 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 please keep screaming at me in front of everybody. I really enjoy it, especially when it's hundreds of strangers that are hungry and just want their lunch and you're interrupting this. And so douchebag manager says something to the effects of like, you either use my script or there's gonna be consequences. And Alec said, I'm not gonna use your script. And that's all he said. He didn't say, I'm not gonna use your script and then spit in his face and say like, I hope that you are cursed forever. He didn't, you know, shove him. He didn't slap him. There was nothing. He just said, I don't want to use your script. So the douchebag manager just screams in front of everybody once again that he's fired and to get out right now and to never come back and he'll mail him his last paycheck. There's no reason for him to ever come back into the store. And Alec is kind of flabbergasted because he's never had an issue with the manager before. He works a lot and usually just keeps his mouth shut. And on top of it, he's like, you're going to fire me when I'm the one working all these hours? Like, all right, dude, fine. But one of the co-workers, not the subscriber, but another one of the co-workers says something to the effect of like, you can't do that, you know, you can't just fire him with no notice in the middle of a rush. And the manager at this point is full on power tripping, dude. If he were on a run, he'd be smacking the floor every two feet because he's just just tripping and he turns to the person who said that who's standing with a group of the other co-workers and says that like if any of them have any problem with the way he runs this they should just keep in mind that he can fire anyone he wants which which is technically the truth i guess if you're the manager and you're tight with the owner you could theoretically fire anyone that you want but if you're gonna be a good manager i don't think managing by fear and convincing everybody that they're inches away from losing their job is the best option especially when you're going to be taking out your anger and firing the hardest worker like at that point everybody else who works there is like ah oh, crap dude i'm screwed this guy's definitely gonna fire me if he's so pissed off at the dude working 60 hours a week 
week who never complains, then I'm definitely going to have an issue with them. But whatever, he can fire whoever he wants. That's the truth. But all the workers at that point kind of realize that it's just a matter of time until he decides to get mad at them, take his anger out on them, and fire them. So they don't want to work for him anymore. If he's willing to fire the best worker that they have on the spot, it's not a place that they would like to work anymore. And it's just not dealing with all the rules, dude, having him time how long you were in the bathroom to see if he thinks you were stealing company time. All this crap, like a new script that he's gonna demand that everybody says, it's just not worth dealing with it. So, the subscriber decides that he's gonna quit, and he says, alright, well if you're gonna fire him, then I quit. He figures he could always get a job somewhere else at this point, and like, whatever, it's just not worth working with this dude. And the manager yells at him that he can't quit, he's not actually allowed to quit without a two-week notice. Which is funny, he's allowed to fire people on the spot in front of everybody, that's chill. But if they want to quit, then he would expect a two-week notice. Isn't it funny how that works? Alright, like, I can put you in a crappy position, I can give you no job. But you can't put me in a bad position, that's not how this works. And when the co-workers start to hear the manager demanding that they put in their two weeks, and that they can only quit on his terms, basically, a lot of them decide that they're gonna quit. So now there's a group of about six people that are quitting, and them and Alec are walking out. And as they're walking out, the manager hops over the counter, does the little, like, Tom Cruise Mission Impossible slide across the counter, and literally gets between them and the door, and starts saying that, you know, they're not allowed to walk out during a shift, and he'll keep Alec on until the end of the shift, he doesn't need to leave right now. Which, listen, dude, if they're already quitting, I don't think the best maneuver is to say, you can't leave, and then offer the person who you just fired, like, the rest of the shift. Hey, man, listen, I know I fired you, and you're gonna gonna have to go find a way to get a new job because you're fired. But I'll let you stay an extra five hours to work with me if you want. Like, no one's gonna take that offer. That isn't actually that good of a deal. No offense. I don't care where you work. It's not a reward for me to have to deal with a crappy boss for an extra six hours after I've already been fired. But Alec decides to smack him back with the I can fire anyone I want and he says that they're allowed to quit any job that they want. And the group at that point has swelled to eight people. And there's only about ten people working at any given time not including the manager, so like 80%-ish of the workforce is deciding that they're done and walking out. And the manager is pissed and he's just going off about how if they walk out this door, they'll never be able to work for this franchise again. Which, listen, I've had bosses use against me before, like, if you quit, you'll never be able to work for this franchise of grocery stores again. And it's like, alright, you know what, <laughs> I'll take my chances. Oh well, I'll never be able to work for this fast food franchise again. Dang it, it's not like they live in America where fast food franchises are basically our national mascot, dude. We have more fast food places than I think we have any other building. I would love to see a comparison. Like, if you combined all art centers, all libraries, all schools, and then the amount of McDonald's, how many more times McDonald's would there be? Like, there's probably at a point where we're at a, a McDonald's for every 10 Americans or something. And that's not where he worked. I'm just talking about how much we love fast food. Like, if he's banned from working there, McDonald's is always an option. It's just not a very scary threat. So, the eight of them end up walking out. And as they're walking out of the parking lot, the other two workers that were going to stay walk out. And when they're walking out to the parking lot, the original group is like, Oh, why did you decide to quit? You guys were going to stay. And they said that after they left, the manager had turned on them and started screaming screaming at them, saying that they were idiots, and da 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 and the entire shift had gone awry, and they should have backed him up. And they were like, listen, man, they all just quit. We stayed. Why are you mad at us? Like, we're literally the only people that are still here. You just lost 80% of the people that work here. You're gonna scream at us when we stayed? And he had said something about how, like, well, if they wanted to quit, they should just go ahead, because he didn't want people there that didn't want to work for him. So they left. I don't think he understands that reverse psychology only works if it's, like, I don't know, somewhat logical. Telling them that they should quit when they want to quit is gonna make them quit. I just don't understand what he was going for there. If you don't want to be here, then just quit! Okay, well, I, I quit. I don't want to be here. I don't think people are jumping for joy to be at their job. Like, that's one thing I think bosses never understand. A job is a job. It's not like they're going to be super, super stoked to be here all the time. Under the logic of if you don't want to be here, quit, you're never going to have workers. Because who really wants to be at work? Aw, oh, man, I love working a double shift. Like, I don't think people really feel that way. Anyways, they all walked out, they all quit, and he was literally left alone to work the rest of the shift. He probably 
called in a couple of their co-workers or something, but with how many people were in the store, I'm sure it was not a very fun time. Imagine having like 150 people waiting in your lobby and your entire staff walks out on you in front of them and you're like, no, don't worry, I'll, I'll come make all the food. I'm sure he was able to eventually get more workers, but they probably won't last too long and the reviews have tanked on the place. So I have a cousin who's a little bit older than me, I think by like five, six years. Not sure exactly, but definitely a little bit older. And he's the baby of his family, uh, to the point where a lot of his siblings are even older, like 10, 15 years older than me. You know, they've got kids, they've got family, the whole shebang. And I don't really know too much about the side of his family that like I'm not related to, you know, his mom's side. But I do know that it's a pretty big family with a lot of cousins and nieces and nephews and stuff and a lot of them are around the age where they really like video games. And obviously, you know, it's not like we talk a ton about it, but he's kind of mentioned that every time he goes home for like a, a holiday or something, it's just chaos because there's just like dozens of screaming children running all over the place doing what they want. And it tends to be that that side of the family isn't too big on like watching the kids or making sure that they're not getting up to no good. So it just tends to be very stressful. And you know, he ended up getting back from one of these trips and he goes, bro, I've got to tell you about what happened. You literally won't believe it. One of my, uh, you know, cousins, niece, nephew, I don't really know what the, the terminology would be. One of the younger kids there ended up breaking his iPad to like try to play Minecraft. And obviously I'm like, wait, what happened? So basically it all starts when he gets there and immediately as soon as he walks through the door, a bunch of these kids run up to him and they're like, hey, 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 do you have an iPad? Do you have an iPad? We want to play Minecraft. You know, before they say hi, before they say happy holidays, before they say anything, the first thing out of their mouth is like, can we have your iPad to pay mi play Minecraft? And so my cousin is kind of like, well, you know, I need to talk to your mom and like, you know, grandma first before I give you guys anything because like, I don't know if you're supposed to be playing Minecraft. I don't know if you're supposed to be on the iPad and I'm not trying to get in trouble and let you guys do something that you're not supposed to do. And they're kind of protesting. They're like, no, you don't need to tell them. Just like, if you have an iPad, let us play it. Let us play it. And something about that kind of makes his spidey senses tingle. So he goes up and he's like talking to their mom about it. And he's like, the kids said that I could let them play the iPad on Minecraft. And the mom looks at my cousin and says, listen, under no circumstances are they to play Minecraft. They literally have been like annoying everybody here nonstop to play it. When we say no, they throw temper tantrums like, no, they're not allowed to play Minecraft. They can go two days without playing a video game. And obviously my cousin is like, all right, fair enough. You know, I'm not trying to break the rules here and like go against what the parents want. So no, you can't play Minecraft on my iPad. And when he tells the kids this, they're obviously not too thrilled. You know, they start being like, you're so lame. When did you become like lame? You suck. And he's like, yeah, whatever, I suck. Yep, you know, I'm the absolute worst. You're really making me want to let you play with my iPad by insulting me, whatever. And at the end of the day, it's kids, so it doesn't really matter. Like, if you tell them no, they're not going to be too thrilled. But, you know, he thinks that's going to be the end of it, that they'll let it be. It's not that big of a deal. And so he kind of goes about spending time with his family. You know, he's just hanging out with them. And when he's hanging out with the family, it's not like he has some, some radar on his iPad, right? It's not like he's keeping a, a lookout for it, you know? He just knows that he had set it in his back pack in his room. And so later that night, he was talking to his dad about something and wanted to show him this thing he was working on. And it just so happened that the thing he was working on was on his iPad. Now, you know, my cousin, for whatever reason, hadn't made a backup of this. So like if the iPad was missing, he wasn't going to be too thrilled, but he was just going to show his dad. So he goes up to his room and he starts looking and he's like, huh, that's weird. My iPad is, is no longer in my backpack. And that's bizarre because uh, I know I left it in my backpack, right? So he at first is kind of thinking like, all right, maybe I just misplaced it. I took it somewhere. So he starts tearing apart the room and his dad comes up because he had been gone for a while. And he's like, hey, what's taking you forever? And he's like, man, I, I feel insane, but I swear my iPad was in my backpack and now I don't know where it is. And they're looking and they're looking. And around that time, you know, the, the group of kids mom comes into the room and she's like, hey, have anyone seen the kids? And at that point he realizes that not only is his iPad missing, but it's been insanely quiet, you know, Usually there's a ton of chaos. It's like the home alone house, bro. Just just absolute chaos. But it's eerily silent. Silent. And at that point, he realizes that these kids have 100% taken the iPad to play Minecraft. They had probably just gone into the room, found it in his backpack, and were like, hey, finders, keepers, losers, weepers. But now they're missing. So they start looking around the house, and they're like, damn, these kids are hiding. And so as they're looking, they start yelling, you know, where are you? Come out now. You know, this isn't funny. Stop pretending like you're hiding. And the kids are 
are not coming out of hiding, bro. It's like they are committed to keeping this iPad, dude. They're literally going to be hiding until they graduate high school just to make sure that they can watch as much YouTube as humanly possible. And finally, my cousin's dad is like, look, the only place that we haven't checked is the attic, you know? I don't know how they would have gotten in there and, like, closed the entrance without anyone knowing, but that's got to be where they are. So they pull down the little ladder thing to go into the attic, and they tell my cousin to, like, go up there and look. And sure enough, he starts coming up the ladder, and as he comes up, he sees the screen kind of reflecting off, and he can see the shadows of everyone watching the iPad. So he yells out, like, I see you over there, come back, you guys took my stuff, that's not funny. And he sees, like, a bunch of eyes turn and look at him, and it's just this group of kids over the iPad, and they're like, we're not giving it back. And he's like, no, you guys, come on, get out of the attic, like, this isn't funny. And he's starting to get really annoyed. And at that point, every adult in the house is getting annoyed, because these kids had literally, like, stolen this iPad, crawled up into the attic, been making everybody look for them for, like, 40 minutes. And so he kind of starts to be like, look, you guys are gonna get out of the attic in the next 10 seconds, or, like, you know, you're gonna be in real trouble. And all of them are kind of like, all right, well, then I guess we're gonna get in real trouble, and at least we'll be able to play the iPad. I don't understand if they knew how these negotiations worked, you know, somehow in their mind, keeping the iPad and playing Minecraft was an option. Obviously, that wasn't gonna be the case. Like, even in the best case scenario, bro, you're an incredible negotiator. You kind of lose the ability to keep the iPad once you take it out of their backpack and then proceed to hide and make them search for you for 40 minutes. Like, they're probably not gonna let you keep it. But anyways, they're kind of arguing back and forth, and at that point, my cousin comes back down the ladder, and he's like, they're not gonna come out. And the kid's mom, or at least some of the kid's mom, is like, all right, well, let me get up there and try. So she crawls up there, and she's yelling at them in the same thing. They're just not listening. They're like, yo, that sucks. Uh, anyways, we're playing Minecraft. Leave us alone. And at that point, the grandpa, you know, my cousin's dad is like, well, I'm gonna go up there and I'm getting the iPad because I don't want them in the attic. This is getting ridiculous. You know, this is disrespectful. So he goes up there and they wa he walks over to him and he takes the iPad. And instead of them being like, oh, fine, you got us. He starts being like, what are you doing? And my cousin climbs back up the attic ladder. And when he looks, dude, this horde of angry iPad kids is just like swarming his dad and being like, give us it back. And they're literally trying to like wrestle the iPad from their grandpa's hands. And at that point, my cousin goes up the ladder to like help his grandpa from this horde of children that are basically being World War Z zombies trying to like, you know, devour the iPad. And he walks over there and he's like, guys, stop, stop, it's just an iPad. And they're like, we wanna play Minecraft. And at that point, I guess his dad decided to let go of the iPad. And when he does, the kid that's, like, hanging on to the other side doesn't go flying, but kind of, like, boof, out of the group, you know, because there's no more person pulling from the other side. And he gets free with the iPad, and he goes, I'm making a break for it! And he starts running to go down the ladder to the attic. I don't really know what the escape plan was once he gets to the ladder, because he's, like, now just in a house with everyone that knows he has the iPad. But regardless, he's making a break for it, and he gets over to, like, the attic ladder thing. And at that point, my cousin and like is like right behind him and he goes give me the iPad and the kid looks back and realizes that my cousin is close enough that he's not gonna get down this attic ladder without getting caught right he's got the iPad he's made it this far but it, it, he's just caught there's nowhere to go even if he goes down the ladder his mom's waiting right there like it's done and at that point you think they would have given up and just been like okay here's the iPad I'm really sorry for taking it but I guess in this kid's mind he's like well if I'm not gonna be able to play Minecraft on the iPad, then no one's gonna use the iPad. Because he proceeds to turn, and instead of going down the ladder himself, he decides to send the iPad down instead. And I don't know if this kid had been watching, you know, NFL Network reruns of the best touchdown celebrations of all time, but the dude ends up spiking the iPad like a football, just basically eight feet straight down onto this hardwood floor, you know? And obviously my cousin sees him throw it, doesn't see the iPad hits the ground, but hears it, and is like, are you kidding? kidding me? And he hears the kid's mom being like, did you just throw the iPad? And the kid who throws it goes, no, I just dropped it. And he's like, no, you didn't. I watched you throw it. And it was almost like once the kid realized that he had been seen throwing the iPad that he messed up because he starts being like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to break it. And my cousin at that point is just pissed. And he's like, yeah, whatever, dude, you didn't mean to break it. I literally just watched you throw it down the, the ladder. 
And so at that point, the grandpa's pissed. He's like, everyone out of the attic now. And the way he says it, everybody just kind of knows he's not kidding. So everyone calmly goes to the ladder and crawls down. And as they get off the attic ladder, he's looking at like the hardwood floor where the kid had thrown the iPad. And the way the kid had thrown the iPad, like the corner of it had just hit the hardwood floor. So there's literally like a chunk out of the hardwood floor plank that he had hit. So that's going to cost money to fix. And on top of it, if you've ever dropped like a, an, an Apple device right on the corner, corner with any type of force, you know, that screen's probably going to crack. Now you throw it down a ladder with enough time for it to get some momentum behind it right onto the corner. You can assume what this thing looked like. It was one of those iPads that was the thinner models. And so like the screens all cracked and it literally was kind of like bent on that corner where he had thrown it onto the ground. And his dad, the grandpa of all these kids is not happy. He's like, are you guys kidding me? Look what you did to my floor. Do you have any idea how much money that's going to cost? You guys think that Minecraft was worth it? Like you're entitled to take other people's technology and the kids are just kind of sitting there getting yelled at and you know they're like not really apologizing they're like well if you would have just let us play minecraft none of this would have happened is literally kind of what they're saying and listen they're young so it's not like they're they're the most expert people on the planet you know this isn't an adult on trial in front of lawyers but you would think by now they would have at least recognized that like oh okay we probably shouldn't have taken his stuff and broken it because now he doesn't have an ipad and that's kind of on us and my cousin is extremely extremely pissed because he's realizing that like this is messing up not only his iPad like just breaking something expensive is not fun but on top of that like all of this work stuff all the stuff he was going to show his dad is on the iPad and he's not a hundred percent that he's got any backups of it anywhere which listen a hey, kind of on my cousin but at the same time it's not like he expected his iPad to be taking skydiving lessons when he was at this family reunion thing you know that's just not what you're expecting but whatever he's kind of like look you guys have really set me back on my work like do you feel bad at all? And they're like, no, not really. Like I said, you should have given us the iPad and we could play Minecraft. And at that point, my cousin's like, well, guess what? Your mom's going to buy me a new iPad now. And the mom is like, I am? you know, kind of confused. And he goes, yeah, your kids just broke my iPad, which is what all my work was on. So like, you're going to get me a new one. And at that point, an entire new argument breaks out. And honestly, I feel like that's kind of fair. Listen, if your kids are going to like break this dude's iPad, right? And then not apologize for it and not feel bad, then like, you know, I think you should have bought him a new iPad either way. But you really know him a new iPad if like your kids don't even care that they broke it. But now there's an argument going about, well, why should I have to pay for your iPad? It's your fault that you left it unattended. And he's like, are you kidding me? It was in my backpack in my room. And she's like, yeah, but you know kids are going to look through your stuff. And he's like, no, I don't. I don't have kids. I didn't realize that I had to put a master lock on my backpack to prevent people from stealing my stuff and breaking it. And at that point, dude, he's like, you know what? I'm, I'm getting a hotel. Like, I can't do this. This is ridiculous. And his dad's like, listen, I'll buy you an iPad. And he goes, no dad like I don't want you to buy the iPad I want her to buy the iPad or the kids to buy the iPad like you know don't don't bail this out like no this is ridiculous so whatever my cousin goes gets a hotel room and the entire time he's getting texts from you know his sister being like oh well why didn't you you know just forgive them like I shouldn't have to buy you a new iPad and he's like look I'm not mad at the kids so, like I'm really not I just feel like I need this iPad to work he was kind of using it as a laptop like a two-in-one type of thing he's like I need it to work it's broken and like your kids broke it you know i'm not angry at them it's broken it's too late now but like yeah you've got to buy me a new one and finally after arguing him getting a hotel room being gone for a day his sister's like whatever i'll buy you a new ipad but the entire time they were like going to get the ipad she kept making remarks about how like this is insanely petty and he should have just been fine with like getting one himself and listen you know sure do i agree that like leaving storming out and threatening not to come back until you get an ipad is the greatest decision no but but at the same time, like, your kids destroyed his stuff. You kind of do got to replace it. I just don't really understand how you're not responsible for it. You know, sure, did you tell them go steal things? No, but, like, your kid uh, spiked the iPad down and, like, destroyed the hardwood floor. The least you got to do at that point is replace what was broken. Anyways, he gets his replacement iPad. Everything's all good, but he's guarding it. You know, he's not letting it out of his sight. And what was really funny is, like, when they get back with the iPad and he's setting it all up, he did lose his work, by the way way that that to me is also why it's like all right you got to get him it because if you ruin his work it's like ah 
obviously should have saved it to the cloud, should have saved it somewhere, you know, that's kind of dumb. But at the same time, you know, he's kind of reworking everything, trying to get as much as he can back. And the entire time he's doing it, his cousins keep coming up to him being like, can I play the iPad? And by the third time he asked, he looked at him and he's like, let me get this straight. You guys destroyed my last one and you think I'm going to let you play with this one? And even the little kids were kind of like, all right, yeah, fair enough when you say it that way. Back when I was really young, this uh, spoiled kid ended up stealing my Game Boy and I was not too thrilled with it. So, uh, I figured since I'm doing the shorter stories this month, I would tell it to y'all because I think you're going to enjoy it. So without further ado, let's go, baby. Don't steal someone's Game Boy. All right, so this story doesn't take place in school, but something very similar. My parents had to work when I was younger, so like during the summer, sometimes I would have to go to this like rec center and hang out with kids there. And honestly, I was not the biggest fan of it, okay? I've always kind of liked to just kind of chill, do my own thing, play some Pokemon, play some video games. So just being in a situation where I was forced to like, you know, do stuff I didn't want to do with people I didn't necessarily know was never something I was hyped about. And because of that, my parents were kind of like, well, you can take your Game Boy, that's fine, you just can't be alone. I was too young for that. So I was like, all right, bet, I'll take my Game Boy, I'll just kind of be able to do what I want to do, play Pokemon Fire Red, and everyone's gonna leave me alone. The only issue was, obviously, I didn't think this through too far, is that everybody that didn't have a Game Boy that was there, like, liked Pokemon, was constantly bugging me to, like, play my Game Boy, play Pokemon. And listen, I understand that that's what's gonna happen, you know? I'm the idiot that brought the Game Boy here, obviously people were gonna want to watch me play and borrow it, it. But because it was my Game Boy, and at the time it was basically my most prized possession to ever exist, there was no way I was about to let anybody just play it. Especially on Pokemon. Are you kidding me? The last thing I need is one of you guys to teach my Blast Toys in HM. I can't make it forget. You know, the last thing I want is you guys wasting my Master Ball on something dumb. So no, I wasn't really down to let people play my Game Boy. And a lot of the people didn't like that I wasn't letting people play my Game Boy, which listen, I'm sure it was annoying from their perspective. But at the same time, I don't gotta let you just like play with my stuff. And there was this one kid that was super entitled that I'm gonna name Kevin for the rest of the story. And Kevin was probably the most persistent about insisting that I let him play my Game Boy. And he would say stuff like, well, I have a Game Boy at my house, so I know how to use it. I won't break it. And you know, my reply would be like, well, then you should bring your Game Boy, bro. You know, he would argue with me about everything I'm doing while like people would watch me play was wrong. And overall, I just really didn't want Kevin to play my Game Boy. You know, I didn't want anyone to touch it. But if you're going to be sitting there critiquing me while you're watching me play, I really don't want to let you borrow it. But sure enough, one time I had to go to the bathroom and one of my friends that I had gotten to know, kind of, was asking if he could play the Game Boy while I went to the bathroom. And I literally didn't want to let anyone use it, but at the same time I didn't want to take it to the bathroom, so I was like, fine, you can play but don't use my Master Ball, don't teach my Pokemon any moves, and whatever you do, do not let anyone else play this Game Boy. I will be right back. Do not let anyone else touch it. You know, that was kind of what I said before I left. And I wasn't trying to guard this thing like it was some rare golden treasure. I was just young and it was my Game Boy, dude. Like, this thing was just my prized possession. So whatever, I go to the bathroom and I'm gone for maybe three, four minutes and I come back out and I walk up to my friend and I go, hey, can I have my Game Boy back? And he goes, oh, I gave it to Kevin. And I'm like, what do you mean you gave it to Kevin, bro? I told you not to give it to anyone. Where's my Game Boy? And he's like, no, Kevin said that it was cool if he played it. You told him it was okay because he saw you in the bathroom. And I'm like, I never told Kevin he's allowed to play my Game Boy. You know, he had seen me walked away and walked up to this dude and been like, Ryan said it's cool if I play it. So sure enough, my friend not knowing any better had just kind of given it to him. And at that point, I'm pissed. Like, I'm annoyed with my friend, but I'm more annoyed that Kevin has my Game Boy. And I'm especially annoyed because I start looking around to try to find him and get it back and homie has just vanished off the face of the earth. It's like he had stolen my Game Boy, gotten the invisibility cloak from Harry Potter, and then teleported to another dimension to make sure that I was never going to be able to track him down. I'm like running around this rec center, dude. I'm looking in classrooms or like, you know, the rooms that they have there. I'm looking in different groups. I'm searching for him and I literally cannot find Kevin or my Game Boy literally anywhere. And listen, I was not trying to have to snitch in this situation, but after spending 15 minutes looking and not being able to find Kevin or my Game Boy, I was starting to get worried that he had like stolen it and gone home, you know? So at that point, I finally decided to tell one of the workers there. And the workers were just like older teenage kids. It's not like they were, you know, some boomers or anything. So I walked up to the one that I trusted the most, which was an older guy. And I was like, hey, this kid stole my Game Boy. And the reason I was telling this particular worker is me and him had talked about Pokemon before. So I knew if anyone was gonna understand why I was so upset about it being 
missing it was going to be him. And he's like, okay, well, did you tell him he could play it? And I'm like, no. And he goes, all right, well, what game do you have? And I was like, Pokemon. And he's like, all right, well, you know, let's see if we can find him. So I start walking around with this worker and he's looking for Kevin and he's asking his coworkers and everyone's like, yeah, Kevin just went out onto the playground, da 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 da. So we go out there and he goes, Kevin. And sure enough, here comes Kevin. He has a Game Boy in his hand. The only problem is my Game Boy was like, uh, I don't know what the color is, like that light blue metally looking one. And on the front of the Game Boy now is just a bunch of stickers. Like it was almost like he had taken it outside and covered it in like just random stickers so you couldn't see the color of it anymore. And I go, what'd you do to my Game Boy? And he goes, this Game Boy? This isn't yours. This is mine. I brought it from home. See, look at the stickers. And the worker is confused and he looks at me and I look at him and I go, that's my Game Boy. That is 100% my Game Boy. He stole it. And, you know, the worker is like, okay, well, is there any way that you can prove this is your Game Boy? Because he's saying it's his. And now it's a he said, he said. And I'm like, listen, dude, that's my Game Boy. You know, I'm a little kid, so I'm not doing the best job of explaining it. But I'm like, that's my Game Boy. He put stickers on it, and he's trying to steal it. And Kevin's just denying it. He's like, it's not my Game Boy. I, I absolutely did not steal your Game Boy. I brought this one from home. And we're going back and forth. And thankfully, thankfully, this worker had played Pokemon before, because otherwise, I probably probably would have been out of luck because he's just demanding that it's his you know he brought it from home and finally the workers like okay well if this is your Game Boy Kevin and it really is yours then like I should be able to take it from you and you should be able to tell me the Pokemon's names and like what Pokemon you have right and Kevin you know kind of realizes like uh oh okay yeah I really can't say no to this because otherwise it's weird but at the same time there's no clue he actually knows what's going on because it's not like it's his Game Boy or his game so he kind of tries to deny it. He's like, no, no, that's not how this works. I don't even want you to check to see if it's my Game Boy. And the worker's like, well, listen, either we're going to have to figure it out right now, or I'm going to take you guys both up to the very front, and you're going to talk to the person in charge of the program, because this is serious. Like, I don't want to be in trouble for someone getting their Game Boy stolen. And reluctantly, Kevin hands over the Game Boy, right? Sure enough, he turns it on, goes to Pokemon Fire Red, and he goes, okay, Kevin, what is your main Pokemon? And Kevin, you know, there's really three options that you could have. This Pokemon game, you can either have Blastoise, Charizard, or Venusaur as your starter. I know that's nerdy. Okay, I still remember this. And for some reason, Kevin must have just been so focused on putting the stickers on the Game Boy that he didn't remember what I had, which is weird because the dude had been criticizing my gameplay all day, bro. He was like, you're doing this wrong. You're doing that wrong. Wrong move. But for some reason, he, in that moment, thank the grace of Grayskull, decided to say that I had a Charizard. And that's when I knew I had him, ladies and gentlemen, on the ropes, because now Nay, nay, nay. I don't dislike Charmander, but I always picked Squirtle as my starter, okay? So instantly, I look at the worker and I go, that's not true, it's a Blastoise, and it's named, and I said my Pokemon's name. And at that point, the worker could really tell that, like, okay, this is my Game Boy, this is my game. And he says, Kevin, do you have any explanation as to why you don't know what Pokemon you have and it's your Game Boy? And at that point, Kevin just started coming clean. He's like, fine, fine, I stole the Game Boy, fine, I took it, I wanted to put stickers on it because I don't have one. Yeah, he had been telling me he had a Game Boy, but nay, I say nay. And at that point, the worker's like, all right, Kevin, we'll give him back the Game Boy. So I get my Game Boy back, and then he's like, Kevin, we're going to go to the front office. Like, you're probably going to get uh, expelled from the program. And at that point, little kid me is like, whoa, 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 I don't, I don't want that to happen. You know, I got my Game Boy back. Like, I don't care. You don't have to take him to the office. And the worker looks at me, and he's like, I don't? You're not mad? And I go, no, as long as I got my Game Boy back, that's really what I was worried about. Like, I don't want the guy to get in any trouble. Which, you know, obviously, like, I guess he did steal my Game Boy, but at the same time, I got it back relatively quickly, and, like, I didn't want to be responsible for this kid getting kicked out of this program. So, the worker looks at me, and he's like, I'm really supposed to report stuff like this. And he looks at me and Kevin, and he's like, but if you guys are saying that it's okay, and you can take care of this issue amongst yourselves, I'm not going to complain, because it's way less paperwork for me. And I didn't really understand what paperwork was, but I was like, yeah, if you're cool with us being cool with it, it's all right. And immediately, I could see Kevin get relieved a little bit and he was like thanks man and I was like yeah just don't take my Game Boy like like you know that's really what I cared about little kid me did not care about this kid getting in trouble at all as long as I had my Pokemon back in my hand that's all that mattered to me and the worker obviously just being like this kid worker who didn't actually want to do any work was fine with it too so sure enough Kevin and I just kind of shook hands and agreed that like 
all right, it's all settled. Don't touch my Game Boy again. And honestly, after that, he was a lot better, bro. Like, homie was no longer staring over my shoulder, calling me a moron. He would tell me where, like, some stuff was, you know, so that way I could go find it because his older brother would play. And overall, me and Kevin actually did end up becoming somewhat friends, you know? Don't get it twisted. I still didn't let him borrow my Game Boy, and, like, I wasn't going to leave it unattended around him. But, you know, I wasn't either, like, I he didn't hate his guts and want him to, like, get kicked out of the program either. But overall, you know, my number one priority in that exact moment was just getting my Game Boy back. Once I had it back in my hands, I really could have cared less about what happened. Either way, though, the worker went on his way. We went back and uh, just kind of kept playing Pokemon. Thankfully, though, a couple kids other than Kevin ended up bringing their Game Boys whenever I would be there after. So we would also be able to, like, battle and trade and whatnot. And overall, it was a pretty good time. But uh, I just figured you guys would enjoy the story of the time the spoiled kid stole my Game Boy. What's going on, guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are having a great day. I know I am. And today I've got a pretty funny story time that was sent in to me about this kid that was trying to flex on everybody with all this money, only to get exposed for uh, most of the money being fake. I just thought it was a pretty funny situation y'all would find entertaining. So uh, yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. All right, so the person who sent this in to me is in college, which is usually when the cringe stuff is supposed to stop. I understand that like most people in middle school, high school want to look cool. They want to fit in. So whatever, people might exaggerate, post a picture with their mom's money. It's still cringe. I'm not saying it's not cringe, but it's a little bit more understandable. If you're still fake flexing on everybody when you're in college, that's when it hits the point of like insanely cringe at least in my opinion. You're supposed to be figuring it out for real right now. You're not supposed to be trying to convince people that uh, your fake Yeezys are real. But, you know, this person was in a class with a guy who constantly was bragging about how he made all this money and he didn't really have to care or try in school because he was already rich. Which, uh, I mean, if that's true, good for you. If you don't have to go to college, congratulations. But if you're really as rich as you say you are, then sitting in college also seems like a giant waste of time. I'm just saying, and everyone would just get annoyed because he would flex for no reason. Obviously, I don't think there's many good reasons to be flexing on a bunch of strangers, but it wasn't as if randomly the conversation of how much money everybody had was brought up and then everybody started talking about how much money they had and he just naturally said it. They would be, like, talking about something in history class. So, George Washington crossing the Delaware or whatever. Yo, Della wears his bag, though. I got a lot of money. Like, that type of stuff. That's kind of a good one. Della wears his bag. I'm patting myself on the back. He was just constantly bringing it up, and it was really, really obnoxious. And one of the things that he would do to prove how rich he is is he would open his backpack and, like, flash cash. And he would have stacks of money in his backpack, and he claimed he always had a hundred grand in his backpack, which I've never understood because I feel like everybody that actually has a hundred grand in a backpack money, like anyone who actually it just makes sense to keep a hundred grand on them, wouldn't keep it in a backpack. And also, if you have a hundred grand in your backpack, it seems really, really dumb in my opinion to tell everyone that you have a hundred grand in your backpack. You might as well just stick a piece of paper on your back, tape on it that says, don't rob me, but if you do, I have a hundred grand. Like, you're just putting a target on yourself. I'm not saying I would rob you, bro. I'm not going to rob anyone. That being said, if you keep running around going, I have a hundred thousand dollars in my backpack, you can't be surprised Pikachu when someone tries to take your backpack. That's probably one of those things you want to keep to yourself. I don't know. I feel like there's no reason to also carry that much cash in a backpack. What do you buy a car for lunch every day? Give me three reasons you would ever need that much cash in a backpack. But he would also never let anyone get a very good look at the stack of money, which uh, the subscriber thought was a little weird, you know? He would always just open the backpack and you would see $100 bill with a rubber band around it and like a stack of money, but you could never really see if the stack of money was all $100 bills, if it was a bunch of ones, whatever. Anyways, he would do this pretty often and everyone just started to get fed up with it and annoyed and like whenever he would bring it up and try to be uh, talking about how much money he has, everyone would just kind of roll their eyes and be like, we get it, man, you have a lot of money. And that's when he started to get a little bit more brazen with how he would like flash these stacks of cash. It was almost as if he could tell people weren't as impressed with it anymore, but he wasn't smart enough to figure out like the last 10%, which was why they weren't impressed, which was no one cares. Instead, he was just like, oh, they've gotten used to how I flex now. So I just need to become more obnoxious with how I flash my money 
because if I just flash my money more obnoxiously, then they'll think it's really cool again. I I'm not sure why that's the conclusion he came to, but he started saying that he now had a quarter of a million dollars in cash with him at all times. Once again, don't know why you would really advertise that, but he would open his backpack and now the money in the backpack was kind of coming out of the backpack and sure enough, it was the uh, top was a hundred dollar bill and there was a rubber band around it and it wasn't that the person who sent this to me was trying to prove that the guy was using fake money, but when he would show the stacks, it was just very obvious that like the paper underneath that hundred dollar bill looked a little bit different and one day he pointed it out to him and the guy got insanely defensive. He was like, hey man, why does all the paper in that stack look different? And he starts going off about how obviously the subscriber is broke and has never held a lot of money in his life because one dollar bills look different than hundred dollar bills and he's a moron and you know, money looks different. These aren't all hundred dollar bills. He has some twenties and tens in there and apparently the government uses different paper for each one to distinguish them and make it uh, impossible to fake it, which is just not true. There are some differences between the dollars, but the government isn't using like different paper for each one to the point where it looks different. Yes, does a hundred dollar bill look different than a one dollar bill? Yeah, it has a little bit more anti-counterfeit measures, but you guys get what I'm saying. If you put like a ten dollar bill and a one dollar bill on top of each other and then show it to somebody where they can't see and say, which one's which they're not going to be able to tell and it was just weird how defensive he got like if it actually was real money you think the thing you would do in that situation is take the rubber band off and show them it's real money you know i just wouldn't be carrying a bunch of cash in my backpack anyways and i definitely wouldn't be telling everyone that i have a bunch of cash in my backpack i don't know why you would want everyone to know that you've got all this money on you i've said that enough but it just blows my mind you would want to tell people that you have a lot of cash on you and so the guy was like, all right, bro, all right, like, relax. He got insanely mad, but he just wouldn't let it go. He's like, you're an idiot. You clearly have never been around a lot of money. You have no idea what's going on. And uh, he little did he know, the subscriber worked for an armored car company that would go and take cash deliveries. So not only did he kind of have a good idea of what money looked like, but the fact that he's calling him a moron who must have never been around money before when it was literally part of this guy's job to be taking, like, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars from different locations to the place where they drop it off he just thought it was funny and so he's like all right man all right my bad my bad once again trying to drop it but the guy from that point on really didn't like him and he just kind of was gonna let it slide he was never gonna call him out and try to expose him in front of everybody but from then on every time this guy would flex he would make it a point to be like i know that guy's really jealous because he's broke and point at him and try to be like yeah see he's dumb and broke and da 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 da, -da and that's why he's such a hater and it got to the point where he was just kind of waiting for the chance to make him look stupid and point out that there was a pretty good chance that this money was fake and finally he got the opportunity when one day there was a, a situation in class where the teacher had brought up something about how like government debt da 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 and this guy starts talking about you know he could probably get the government out of debt because he's so rich and I think that makes me know that this guy's never been around money before bro because even if you are like rich let's say hypothetically you're a multi-millionaire you're in the top one percent you're doing well uh, we're like 17 trillion dollars in debt, bro. I, I don't really think that like even if you are rich, it's, you're going to be able to do a whole lot. Kudos to you if you want to go ahead and eliminate the national debt. I'm sure the country will be very grateful, but chances are you're not that rich. And he takes out his money and he's holding two big bricks of money in his hands and he's holding them up to his ears like uh, it's a telephone. And he starts pretending that he's having a call with the president saying, yeah, do you need my money? Which I'm not going to lie, is kind of funny. Like, oh, hello, Mr. President, do you need my money? But this time the teacher goes, okay, put it down. Like, this is not what class is about. And he stands up and tries to get mouthy with the teacher about, you think you can tell me what to do with all these bands? Which, yes, even if you are rich, I think the teacher is in charge of the classroom. I don't think that magically changes anything. The teacher's just going to look at him. Ah, oh, bro, you're right. Forget my class that you're paying money for you have a lot of money 
But when he does it, he like hits his knee on the desk when he pops up and then the money plops out of his hand. And it's such a big brick of money that there's a few different like rubber bands around it and then a bigger rubber band with the rubber banded money. Well, the big rubber band pops and when that happens, they kind of fling everywhere. And everyone's watching this happen and he immediately screams, no one touch my money. But the subscriber just puts his foot on like one of the small stacks and slides it under his desk. And he's not going to steal it. I want to make that clear. He made it very clear that if it was really would have 100% given it back to him said he missed one but he just wanted to look he was just curious and so the guy picks them all up and he's counting and he clearly doesn't know how much money was like in his hands because he says okay that's all of it he doesn't even notice that there's one missing and he sits back down and the teacher gives him a little bit of a talking to or the professor excuse me being like you know this is college this isn't high school anymore no one cares about your money da 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 and he's just kind of acting all arrogant like yeah people who don't have money say they don't care about money just just like being annoying. Listen, I'm not saying money isn't cool. Like money can buy cool things. Trust me, I would I would rather drive a Lamborghini than a Toyota if I have the choice. I would rather have, you know, an iPhone than a flip phone. Like there are certain things that money is cool for, but to say that it's like the only thing that matters or that it gives you special privileges to just interrupt a class is pretty stupid. Anyways, uh, while they're going back and forth, the kid who's trying to flex isn't paying attention. And so he takes it and he like unbans the first $100 bill off and he takes it off. And sure enough, he starts looking. And the money underneath the $100 bill in this stack has like the motion picture use not real money written on it. And immediately he starts laughing. And it's while this guy's arguing with the teacher and the guy looks over and is like, what's so funny, bro? And that's when he sees on the desk that the guy has a stack of the money and the $100 bill is off. And immediately he just starts freaking out. That guy's trying to steal my money, man. Why do you think it's funny to be touching my money? I don't think it's funny that your hands are on my money. It's, a, it's kind of funny his hands are on your money bro and you're starting to sound like dr seuss but whatever he starts freaking out trying to insinuate that this guy's trying to rob him so the subscriber takes this chance to show everybody the truth and he stands up and goes you know how this guy's been flexing this money saying that he doesn't need to care about school da 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 i don't know if he's counted it or not but apparently the only thing it's good for is shopping if you live in a movie and he shows everybody that it says motion pictures made in america blah 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 whatever and everybody starts laughing, being like, dude, it's fake money. And now he's pissed and he's screaming, give me my money back. Give me my money back. And he starts running over and trying to take it out of the subscriber's hands. And the subscriber, once again, was not trying to, to flex too hard. He just got blessed genetically. Happens to be insanely tall. Like I'm talking above 6'5", which is just insanely tall. And the guy who was always flexing the money was probably about 5'8", five, 5'9", five, like standard size. And so he just lifts his arm straight up into the air with this fake money in it and goes, look at the fake money, look at the fake money. And he's laughing. Meanwhile, the guy that just got exposed for flexing the fake money is literally got his hand straight up jumping, like trying to grab the money out of his hands. Like, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. Except he's mad while he's doing it. And he's like, give it to me, give it to me now. And everyone's laughing. And finally, the professor is like, that's enough. Give it back to him. And so the subscriber, not wanting to disrespect the teacher, is like, all right, I'll give it back to him. So he hands it to him. And the kid's like, that is not funny. You tried to steal my money. And he's like, bro, we all saw that it's fake money. Like, come on. We all know all the money in the backpack is fake. And he's like, no, it's not fake. This is the fake money. And I use the fake money when I pull it out of my backpack. But there is real money in the backpack. And at that point, even the professor has had enough. And he's like, OK, well, then prove the money in your backpacks real because we're all tired of this and I don't really know if that's against the rules I don't know if they're allowed to do that but either way if I was in his shoes I'd want to do the same too like this has interrupted my class enough either put up or shut up you're either rich or you're not you got to prove it or like never bring it up again dude and even if you are rich no one cares man I swear dude like I don't care if you're worth a billion dollars I don't care if you're worth thirty dollars if you suck you suck like it just is what it is you can be rich bro you can't buy a different personality that's the reality of the situation. Uh, I actually have eight million dollars, but I also hate the sound of fun. Like, okay, who cares? But he gets pissed off with the teacher and is like, I don't have to prove anything to you. You have no authority over me, so I don't have to do anything. And the teacher's like, you're right, you don't have to prove it, but if you're not going to prove it, then I don't want to hear about it in my class anymore. And the guy's like, you know what? I don't have to listen to this stuff. I don't even have to be at this school. I've got the money. Like, I don't even need to be here. And he grabs his backpack full of the fake money and starts walking out the door 
And on the way out, someone in the class just yells out like, we all know it's fake, bro. And everybody starts laughing because let's be honest, everyone in this class knows it's fake now. In his mind, he's like, all right, if I storm out of here, everyone will think that I'm actually super pissed off. And maybe a few of them will still think that I'm like super wealthy. But everyone in the class already didn't believe him because he was just constantly carrying around a backpack with a quarter million dollars in it. Ooh, that's such a smart idea. But he's storming out and now he's just embarrassed because I think he probably realized that no one believed him in the first place. But he turned around and said that everyone in this class was haters and they were really going to regret talking to him like that when they saw him on TV one day and how, you know, they just underestimated the skills of him at a young age. And listen, bro, for your sake, I hope you end up on TV. You're going to be the richest, most famous dude ever. But even if you're on TV one day, are you really going to sit there and tell whoever's interviewing you? Yeah, I actually used to love to go places with a backpack full of fake money and flex on everyone. Like, either way, that still was what you were doing. Sorry. Like, even if one day you're really successful, the cringe is still there. And everyone's done cringe things. I'm not saying it, like, makes you irredeemable forever. It's just kind of a weird thing to say when you also are still cringe in the situation. I also love him being like, I'm so rich, I don't need this. I don't need to be at college at all. This is all dumb. And they're like, why are you doing this? College isn't cheap. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're you're in a college class, but you don't have to do it. You just want to do it. I've heard of people going back to college if they have a super successful business or something. I'm never going to hate anyone for getting educated, but I also feel like those people wouldn't be rolling around saying they don't care about it. Because why are you paying for it if you don't care? Like, I, I college just is a little too expensive to just be doing willy-nilly if you don't want to be there. I don't know. Maybe he really is just the richest person on the planet. Uh, he gets $100 every time he tells someone he's rich. That's why he's doing it all the time or something. Either way, he leaves. And you think he would never have the balls to come back to that class. Like, I feel like if you have a freak out like this, your only option is to just move to a different country, change your names, wear a fake mustache everywhere you go. And uh, I'd prefer it if you change your name to something funny. If you are going to go with a fake alias, you might as well go as funny as possible. It's an alias you're going to have to use for the rest of your life. So you got to do something silly like super rich boy richie rich off oh, for him because he's so embarrassed he probably would not want to relive it maybe you shouldn't be allowed to pick your secret identity that kind of defeats the whole purpose but i think it'd be funnier if it's like something that makes you ashamed of what you're changing your name for anyways the next class there's someone in class that apparently is not the kid who used to bring the backpack full of fake money but there's someone who looks just like him in a hat and sunglasses in the class and he's just ignoring everyone that says that guy's name and then someone's like who are you and he goes oh I'm new I just transferred in the guy is like pretending to be in a disguise and be someone different and whatever after that everyone just dropped it mainly because they didn't want to argue with this crazy dude so they just let it slide he was in the class but the next time the class comes around he walks in without the disguise on so everyone's going to know it's him and everyone's sitting there and, da -da 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 -da, and the teacher leaves for a second to go do something Thing. And uh, somebody decides to like mess with him a little bit and goes, where were you last class? We missed you. Thinking he would be a little embarrassed or something because he came in a disguise. But instead, the guy just looks at him and goes, what are you talking about? And uh, the person who asked him just kind of asked him again, like, well, where are you last week? You were supposed to be in class and you weren't here. We missed you. And the guy straight faced goes, um, I don't know what you're talking about. I've never met you guys before. And they're like, dude, come on. We've literally been in class this entire year together and he says that it's the first day that he's been in this class because he just transferred to this college and everyone in the class is really confused because this is 100% the guy that used to fake with the flex or fake flex the money whatever I'm trying to talk in English here but they know it's him but he's just denying that he's ever met them before and saying he just transferred in so they ask him well what about last week with the money and he looks at them confused and is like what do you mean a couple weeks ago with the money what do you mean last week with the money and they're like yeah you used to carry this backpack of cash with you and it ended up being fake and he's just looking like none of this has ever been presented to him before as if he really has no clue what's going on he's genuinely seeming confused and he's just like I don't know what you're talking about I've never done that and somebody calls him out at that point and they're like dude come on we know it's you you can't gaslight us into thinking that didn't happen 
And he goes, no, no, I'm not trying to gaslight you. You probably just have me confused because I have a twin brother. And everyone's like, what? And he says, yes, yes, I transferred here. My uh, evil twin brother transferred to my school. He's a big jerk, super arrogant. He actually carries a backpack of fake money. I think that's what you're talking about. And everyone's looking at this guy like he can't actually think that we're stupid enough to believe this, right? It's one thing to come in a disguise. You were already insulting your classmates' intelligence if you think that, like, you can do the good old Captain America disguise, put on a hat and sunglasses glasses and everyone is just magically oh who is that goodness gracious can i just talk about that for a second bro i can't remember which marvel movie but there's one where captain america the super soldier who's like six seven three hundred pounds of pure muscle is walking around and no one recognizes him because he has a baseball hat on like all right man i don't know how realistic that is apparently that guy watched or this guy watched that movie and thought that was the greatest idea ever but when that didn't work he just decided to go the whole evil twin route but he's really sticking to it and he's like no i have an evil twin who uh it is really arrogant and we switched colleges and everyone just tells him straight up like we don't believe you we know it's you come on like how dumb do you think we are but he doubles down and is like i don't think you guys are dumb trust me i'm so sorry if my brother did anything to upset you or make you guys feel bad but i'm not my twin and listen, like, it doesn't matter how hard you're gonna pretend that you are a different person. Everyone knows it's you. Because you would think if this guy's always flexing, he would have mentioned his twin at some point. That's something to flex. Seriously, though, like, it was just obvious that he was pretending. But whatever, the teacher walks in and he goes, Oh, nice to meet you, sir, and tries to introduce himself, and the teacher is confused. So the class catches him up to date. Apparently, he just transferred in here because his evil twin switched colleges with him, and his evil twin is the one who faked flexed the money. And the professor is like, well, that's weird because I don't have any new names on my roster, and I'm pretty sure the computer system would have put you on here. But your uh, evil twin brother's name is still here. And he gets this weird look on his face, and you would think that, like, all right, he's getting a weird look. The teacher's saying his name's not on the roster. He's going to have to come clean. There's no way he's going to commit to just pretending to be his imaginary twin brother much longer. But he looks at the teacher and is like, wow, that's weird. It, it sure is bizarre. Maybe it'll get past patch before the next class. Just make sure you mark down that I was here. And he goes and he sits down. And for the rest of the class, he keeps up the act that he has an evil twin brother and he has no clue what anyone is talking about. Which is nuts, but I have to give him credit for the follow through because it's not just that class. Everyone would mess with him every class, but for the rest of the year, he just said that he was not that guy and he was his twin and he didn't know why everyone was so insistent that it was not him. And to give even more proof that it just wasn't his twin brother, because I know someone's going to be like, what if it was his twin brother? The other guy kept posting on social media from this college, and they could never find his brother's account. Which, I mean, if you're going to commit to pretending to be your twin brother, at least make the fake Instagram for it. But whatever, uh, it was very evident to everyone. It was just the pure shame of it that probably made him commit to just pretending to be his twin. After all the dumb stuff he said and the fake money, he probably was just like, I have to change my name. Anyways, guys, I just thought this story was hilarious. I thought you guys would enjoy it. If you did, I would really appreciate y'all taking a second to press the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comment section down below. And if you're new, subscribe and turn on those notifications. It really helps the video do better, and I would appreciate it. And if you like the story times, but uh, you don't like the gameplay, you want to listen offline, I do post the audio versions over on Spotify. Feel free to go check that out. Link down below. And there's also going to be a link to a playlist I made for here on YouTube uh, with some of my favorite favorite story times of the year. So if you need something to listen to while you're gaming, doing chores, whatever, feel free to check that out. Link down below as well. On that note, I'm going to go buy a bunch of fake money, fill up a backpack with it, run onto a bus screaming, I'm just the Monopoly man, and then throw the fake money in the air and run off before everyone realizes it's fake. Ha 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 ha, get trolled. And uh, if anyone does catch me, I'll just say, no, that was my evil twin brother. He opened up a wormhole and switched places with me and everyone's obligated to believe it. On that note though, don't get anyone pregnant. If you do make sure they're and hopefully I'll see you guys next time. I'm out. Peace. Wow, you made it to the end of the video. You know what? You deserve at least $80 billion. I'm not going to give it to you, but you can go get it. Now watch another video if you want.